Howdy YouTube and welcome to another episode of The Gunman. So today I'm on my holidays and I'm going to be fixing this little corner of the bumper for my wife. So this is my wife's car and a little bit of a uh, parking mishap here as you can see. Not that big of a deal, very easy job to fix. I'm not even going to replace that moulding. I reckon by the time we have that all painted, I don't think it's going to look too bad. I mean, I might see if I can find one later down the track, but for now I'm just going to be focusing on the paintwork. Um, I mixed up a little bit of colour from work. The boss is okay with that, just like 150 mils. Um, 744 is the colour code. So yeah, the first thing I did was um, gave the car a wash, so it is nice and clean. And then we're going to get this moulding off. There we go. Alright, so just about ready to get some of this UV filler in. I'm still a massive fan of this UV filler. Every now and then I sort of um, get some comments about it and yeah, some people are not fully sold on it and on one hand I get it, you know, like it's kind of a new product and not everyone's going to jump on board with it early, but don't sleep on it guys and if you haven't given it a proper shot and, uh, and the good stuff, right, so this is Nuva, highly recommend this stuff guys. Um, but yeah, if you haven't given it a proper shot, don't be too quick to pass judgment on it not being good because it is amazing, especially for stuff like this. The amount of time it saves, you'll never get two-pack to dry this fast. You'll never get a repair done this fast with um, two-pack. Um, I know a lot of people love their two-pack and hey, it definitely has its place, don't get me wrong. Like I'm not saying that UV will ever completely replace two-pack. Um, but yes, it is, it's awesome. And like I say guys, don't sleep on it. Um, yeah, one of the big things is the lights, you know, the price of the lights, but they are, you know, gradually coming down. Um, I think this light here that you see is around $2,000. Um, but I do have one at work that I'm a big fan of and that is Specular brand. Um, and that's about $1,300, so yeah. Uh, they, the prices definitely are coming down. So there we go, that's our first fill, and I reckon that's got sort of 80 or 90% of it. What we'll do is whack these glasses on. <laughs> they look like the glasses out of, um, oh, what's that movie? Obey. Um, they live, that's the one. I can see the world for what it truly is. You get like this slimy layer on the top of the UV fillers. Yeah, thinners did the job. Now we need a little block. And some sandpapers. Look at how well it stands, like no clogging up the sandpaper or anything. How good's that? It is a bit harder, like it goes a bit harder. So yeah, there, there is a bit of an adjustment period when it does come to using the UV fillers. Don't expect it to perform exactly like your, your two packs. But like I say, just give it, a sh like, give it a real shot, you know what I mean? Don't just, oh, this is crap. It's not exactly the same as what I've used for the last, you know, 30 years, so it's crap. No, it's, it's not the case. You end up just shooting yourself in the foot when you um, give up on things too early, I think. And you know why? Because I've done it before. <laughs> I've been that arrogant, arrogant shit who just thinks he knows better than um, everybody else. Uh, you don't do yourself any favours. So, I reckon most of that's pretty good now. I reckon we might even just be able to hit it with the green. So the green is the finer um, filler with the UV, with the Nuva putties. Yeah, I reckon we give it a fine skim with the green. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. So, I'll give that a blow down. And a wipe down with a microfiber too. 
And then from there, that's gonna be fine to go straight over with the green. So this is like a fine filler. It's more like for uh, chips and pinholes and stuff like that. Yeah, you do need to give it a stir. I haven't used this stuff for a while, so it is due for a stir. Nice and creamy. So yeah, this will fill up all those little pinholes that you might have. Generally, I do find the UV filler actually better for pinholes, but you still, you can get it, especially when you go on a bit thick. But another thing you do have to be careful, you don't, don't go on too thick with the UV fillers because um, it will not cure all the way down to the bottom. That's one of the things you do need to be very cons uh, conscious of. I also find that this UV filler has a better adhesion. I don't know, it's potentially something about how hard it goes, but yeah, it does seem to stick a bit better than the normal polyester fillers. All right, what are we gonna hit that with? What do we got here? Not 2,000. 400 could work. That's looking good, nice and smooth with the 400 too. Thank you to my dear wife for giving me the content for this YouTube video. Yeah, so it's not perfect. If I wanted that um, much better, I'd have to UV prime it or even two pack prime it. But for what it is, just a quick tidy up on the corner of that bumper, that's gonna be more than, uh, more than enough. So what I'll do now is just hit those edges with a bit of something just to scuff it up so that it's not, so that any overspray is gonna stick. Uh, should I, yep, exactly what I wanted, 500 pad. So I'll hit those edges with a bit of false edge just so that you don't get too hard of an edge there if you get close to it with any of your, mar uh, with any of your primer. Okay, so that's it after a repair. Uh, I got it with two fills, so two fills of the uh, Nuva fillers. So I use the, the rough filler, then the fine filler. Look, for what it is, I'm just gonna use a bit of 1K primer, as you can see here, just spray max, cheap, whatever it is, you know. Um, just whack it on, it's gonna be the right shade of primer too, which is good. A little bit of dark gray. All right, and that's about it, guys. So that's it for the primer. I did cop one little pinhole there, but I reckon I just filled it up with that 1K primer. Um, that's looking pretty good. So I'll hit that with the heat gun for a minute. And the reason I'm so tied up here is because I've got these, um, uh, these car ramps, and to use the car ramps, because all my cars are, well, except for the Corolla, they're all rear wheel drives. I, I kind of had to put some bolts in the floor so that like kind of short of um, putting more bolt holes in the floor I'm sort of set to where I can drive up those ramps all right so I'm gonna let that dry I might just go and have a coffee or something and come back later but yeah it's looking pretty good nice quick easy repair there UV primer mate what's that 17 minutes start to finish well start to prime anyway so yeah, I've been doing spot repairs for quite some time now, and I definitely didn't always do them the same. So what I would have previously always done is primed it up like that. Well, I would have used two pack way back in the day. Would have used two pack fillers, um, potentially a bit of 1K primer sometimes, depending on the size of the repair. Um, I wouldn't have had the UV fillers, wouldn't have had the UV primers. I did get on the UV primers before the fillers though. So um, yeah, potentially I would have UV primed that at some stage. Um, but what uh, I was about to say is that previous 
previously I'd two pack primer or whatever primer even if it was UV and then I'd unmask it and then put it in the booth and do a second mask but what I ended up finding is there's no real need for it like um, yeah a small repair like this I can, I'm just happy to do that where it is now and just mask it up once so put one piece of plastic over it small do your repair and then just open it up when you're ready to do your colour so I find that that uh, saves a fair bit of time um, and you can yeah paint it where you repair it so obviously if you're using a spray booth that may not work and you may have to sort of double mask it because you don't want to do all your prep work in your spray booth and get all the dust in there but for a job like this where I'm doing it at home absolutely ideal so now while I'm waiting for that primer to dry which there's only two coats of primer so um, and it's just just an aerosol 1k primer so it's not going to take long to dry I gave it a heat gun what I like to do that is go hot cold hot cold so I went hot with the heat gun let it cool down even with the airline and blow the heat on it and now I've got it hot and I'm just going to let it gradually cool down so it's uh, by the time I've finished doing this and I've finished hand sanding those uh, blend areas um, that'll probably be right to come back and have uh, minimal if no downtime. There's some other little sort of um, you know time saving things that I never used to do. I'll show you what I mean. So we'll run a bit up under there first but you know, the, the younger me, you know, um, would have gone and cleaned right up inside here. But what I do these days, just on that inner lip, you're totally fine to do that. As long as you um, prep and paint it properly, um, even around here on wheel arches, generally I'll just do that. Um, and just, you know, depending on the kind of car, if you're working on a brand new Maserati or something like that, or a Bentley, you might change the methods a little bit and yeah, uh, you know, spend that little bit extra time, but on it, everyday normal cars, I find that kind of thing, it's just fine. Just back mask it and peel it back from the edge, and just when you're painting, you just don't aim for that edge. Um, so you just basically spray like that when you're spraying, so you're not going to get any sort of big thick edges inside there. Yeah, a job like this um, should generally take less than two hours, start to finish. Even here at home, like even here at home, like I, I, I've been surprised at how efficient I am in my little home garage. Like you would think, oh, you're at home, you know, you don't have the spray booth, you don't have all the equipment. And it's like, I kind of do have all the equipment here, if you know what I mean. I've got all the sandpapers, um, yeah, the, the curing things like the UV fillers, um, heat guns, I've got infrared lights over there. Um, probably won't need them on a day like this, it's a pretty warm day. Um, but yeah, I, I've gone and got myself a killer little setup in here, so very grateful for everything that I have. All right, so that's ready for a quick scuff now. So I'll hit that bit, um, the repair bit with the 500 and then probably aim for 800 on the blend sections. Where's that 500? There it is. And that's prepped, so it's literally as easy as that. We'll give it a quick blow off and then a prep sole down and we're ready to start painting. All right, so that is ready to start getting some color down on. Really fast repair procedure. Um, yeah, using all the, the latest stuff, but in my shed. How good is that? You can tell I haven't used this for a while. Spray booth. There we go. Oh yeah, so we've got inlet there as well. So I've got that a bit blocked up at the moment, but you can see that's still pushing air in. And I do have a fan up here. I may as well use it. Got it, may as well use it. Because without this, I've found that the, um, 
The overspray just hangs over this and won't move through. There you go. Oh, spray booth working, mate. Killer. How good's that? Straight onto here. Loves it. All right, so next up, we'll probably wear a couple of gloves. Uh, gonna need a respirator sooner or later. So this gun here, spray gun's direct sent it out. This is a prototype, I believe. If you have a look at that, sample for test, right? So these aren't actually mass produced yet. It was basically spray gun's direct idea to get a, um, sort of a midi gun that's affordable that people can use at home um, and not have to worry about like big compressors so the beautiful because it's a mid size it's not a mini right so this is actually a midi, midi as well so it's basically rubbing shoulders with that gun at a fraction of the price but all things uh, considered I mean sorry money not considered that is the best gun on a uh, mini gun on midi mini to midi gun on the market this is probably the best budget one. So this is a R150, right? Uh, 60, sorry, R160. They've given it the name Compact, right? Um, HPS Compact. So they've actually ditched the R160 branding, but they've um, they're going to increase the size of their tips so that you can say potentially paint a pole bonnet with it at home. So yeah, exciting stuff. And this is something that um, Chris from Spray Guns Direct has had his hands all over the making of this gun. And yeah, Gunny gets to try it out. So perfect place to try it out at home um, on a little spot repair. It's exactly what um, you would want to use it on. And I don't do too many spot repairs at work, so it actually works out well. Where's my color? There it is. Told you guys, once you're all set up and you're ready to go, it shouldn't take that much longer in your shed than what it does um, at work in a spray booth, especially on a warm day like this. Anyway. Enough yabbering, where's my respirator? I'm just gonna wear this one today because it's a small... Oh, again, thank you, Spray Guns Direct. You guys sent this out too. If you need anything like this, guys, head over to Spray Guns Direct. They're legends. So there we go, guys. It would have been easily less than an hour to get it up to this point. So that's repair, prime, mask, and prep, and prep sole. I've got color in the gun and ready to go. So that's a pretty impressive turnaround. Like I say, I've found it doesn't really take any longer at home. Once you set up, then it does at work, as long as you've got color and stuff like that. But yeah, so this is a good look at that gun which I was talking about before, which is um, hopefully going to be made. So this is in a 1.3. It's the ANI HPS Compact. So yeah, hopefully they do actually uh, mass produce them. All right, so that's two coats. They're dry pretty well now. Uh, maybe dry that down a little bit longer. The um, heat gun always seems to trip out the power, so I've got to wait for the compressor to turn off before I start using the heat gun. All right, time for our last coat now. So this is a clear coat that I'm going to be using. It's ultra cheap, ultra nasty, but you know what? It does the job. I've used it before and it seems to hold a pretty good gloss for what it is. But what I do, like it dries so fast, I do two double headers, right? So, um, and it's really thin. So I think two double headers is probably around the similar film build to a normal HS clear, but this is ultra thin. Yeah, it, but it dries so fast. That's why I found like one coat, it just sucks in and it dries instantly. So you go one coat, followed by another coat straight away, leave it for a few minutes, you know, three to five, depending on how long it's drying, uh, how long it's taken to dry. Um, but yeah, there you go. So four to one, mix it up, spray it on. 
Oh, yeah, so this clear here, CL201 is what it's called, uh, Challenger Fast Clear. It doesn't take any reducer and it definitely doesn't need it. I wouldn't even imagine it would need it in winter. And you'd probably find uh, most most year round you won't even need to heat it up because it's so thin. I mean, you could, but oh, there we go. The hardener's gone in that one. Last coat of clear. Nice big fan on that, have a look at that. Then we'll do a little fade out or a little blend. That's just thinners, normal thinners. Give it a shake up. So there's a little bit of um, clear still in there, right? And that's about it. A little bit down there. I knew that was going to happen. I was waiting for it. So that's it after the overspray has died down. I've given it an hour and it's definitely touch dry. I'll just unmask it um, and maybe just give that a buff in tomorrow. And just a quick, just the very top part, like there is a few nibs down the bottom there. You've got to expect that when you're painting in the garage, but um, yeah, I'll probably just get some of those nibs. There's a few big ones more just up the top there. Um, a little bit of orange peel in it, but that's nothing major. It doesn't bother me for what it is. Yeah, looking all good. All right, so I just gave that a good fix up properly. So I pulled that molding out. I probably should have taken it out before I painted it. Either way, it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, I pulled that molding out because it was broken on the inside. There's two little clips that sort of hold it inwards. It was flapping out. So yeah, I gave that a quick fix just with a bit of Cubon super glue and that powder. So I'm just going to give this top bit here just a quick scuff over just to sort of clean it up a bit. Had a few big chunks land in it. And this blend. To, it's a bit gritty on that blend. Uh, probably part of that is the um, the overspray from the color. <clears throat> mm, that's looking pretty good. So that's yeah, just a quick scuffo with 2000 grit. I'll we'll clean that out. Use that again, and then I've got some 3000 grit here, just a used bit. That'll be alright.
Yeah, definitely not looking for perfection out of this job. Just a quick tidy up, just to sort of take the eye off it as much as anything. So next up, we'll give it a fine polish. How good is that guys? Killer, you'd never know. You'd never know my wife smashed into the gate the other day. <laughs> hey, that color actually doesn't look too bad. Not bad for PPG. There you go guys, nice little uh, repair there for my holiday time. I always feel bad if I have like a couple of weeks off and I don't do a few little jobs like this around the house, like jobs that you always have been meaning to get to but um, don't have the time when you're uh, full time working. So yeah, good to get a couple of little jobs like this done on my time off. So awesome little repair there. I did um, glue the inside of there so that's, um, that's sticking in correctly now. The only real thing you can pick on it is that there's a, a crack in that molding, but honestly, it, it doesn't really show up that bad. Um, yeah, short of knowing that it's there or, you know, getting a little bit too close to the car, then it's yeah, not that big of a deal. But yeah, what an awesome little car this thing is. I tell you what, it's a, a very nice car to drive um, and it's in immaculate condition. 130,000 Ks on the clock, so it is worth um, keeping in good condition, but um, yeah, I've actually got a micrometer, so what I did, um, I checked the entire car, there's only been one panel that has been painted on this entire car, so that's pretty impressive. From brand new, one panel that's been painted, it's a quarter panel on the other side, but yeah, I mean, apart from the bumpers, I think the bars might have had a lick at some stage, but yeah, I, I can't read the thickness of the paint on the bumpers, but either way, guys, hopefully you did enjoy watching this video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up as always. Until next time, get out there and paint some shit. Government out.